Ms. Cannon, Justin Murph, I serve as the Executive Director of the Anglican Office for Government and International Affairs. I'm also proud to serve as the coordinator for the Save Karabakh Coalition. As we gather today on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, it is right to remember those who have suffered from genocide and who were persecuted for their faith. And it is why we must all work together to proactively prevent any further genocides or holocausts from ever taking place again. For far too long, the plight and the suffering of Armenian Christians has fallen on deaf ears, especially when it comes to Protestant and Evangelical Christians. This is a grievous error that the Anglican Church in North America has learned from and is committed to never doing again. My fellow Anglican, the Baroness Caroline Cox, a member of the UK House of Lords, president and founder of the Humanitarian Aid Relief Trust, has journeyed almost a hundred times into the Karabakh region. Without a doubt, she is one of its greatest champions internationally. Only a few short weeks ago, she raised the current crisis with our Archbishop, the very Reverend Dr. Foley Beach, primate of the Anglican Church in North America, who upon reading her report simply issued the following command, do whatever you can. So today, in light of the ongoing and rapidly escalating humanitarian crisis in the Nagorno-Karabakh region, we announced the launch of the Save Karabakh Coalition, a diverse and proactive advocacy coalition that is sounding the alarm and seeking to prevent yet another genocide of Armenians, this time in Nagorno-Karabakh. While the world has remained largely silent for the past 47 days, 120,000 ethnic Armenians who have called Nagorno-Karabakh home for centuries have faced isolation through an aggressive blockade by Azerbaijani forces, seeking to drive out this historic Christian community from their ancestral homeland. As a collective of NGOs from around the world, we hereby call upon our respective government leaders to take all necessary measures to prevent the impending genocide of ethnic Armenian people of Nagorno-Karabakh, to apply economic pressure to the Republic of Azerbaijan, to lift the blockade of the Lachin Corridor, including the suspension of current or planned economic or military aid distributions to Azerbaijan, and to work within the United Nations Security Council and other established international cooperative frameworks to provide for peacekeeping, to ensure that the fundamental human rights of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh are protected. I'm so thankful to welcome the members of Congress who lend their voices today in support of these people. And with that, I would like to introduce Congresswoman Judy Chu from California's 28th Congressional District. Yes, hello. I'm Congressmember Judy Chu from California's 28th District. And I want to thank the Armenian National Committee of America, Christian Solidarity International, and all those here today in this coalition who are standing up for the peaceful people of Artsakh. On December 12th, Azerbaijan violated the terms of the ceasefire agreement yet again by implementing an illegal blockade of the Lakshin Corridor, the only road connecting Artsakh and Armenia, putting thousands of innocent lives at risk. This blockade is depriving the people of Nagorno-Karabakh of life-saving medications, food, energy, and other necessities. That is why I have urged the Biden administration to use all the tools at its disposal, including sanctions, to ensure the safety of those in danger. As one of the few members of Congress who visited Artsakh in person, I've seen for myself how hard the people there were working to build a thriving, peaceful, democratic society. That result resulted in Azerbaijan banning me from the country. Well, that visit and Azerbaijan's reaction reaffirmed for me that we need a lasting peace in the region that recognizes people's right to determine their own future. The launch of the Save Karabakh Coalition here at the U.S. Capitol is an inspiring show of support for the 120,000 Armenians living in Artsakh peacefully but suffering at the hands of the Aliyah regime. I will continue to work with my colleagues here in Congress to make sure that the United States stands up for the ideals of democracy and self-determination and to that end stands with the people of Artsakh. Thank you.
Next, we'd like to welcome our host for today's event, Congressman Brad Sherman of California's 32nd Congressional District. Congressman, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Hello, I'm Brad Sherman from California's best name city, Sherman Oaks. I am so pleased to be with uh, Senator Brownback, Jim Costa, Lou Carrera, and of course we just heard from Judy Chu. Uh, Congress is uh, certainly interested in this issue. Uh, I want to uh, recognize that this is a painful time for the Armenian American community and for Armenians around the world. 120,000 ethnic Armenians in Artsakh have faced 50 days of blockade from Azerbaijan. A blockade that has depleted food and medicine and they've cut off natural gas supplies at the very center of winter. I'm glad to see that the President of the United States, President uh, Biden, through his Secretary of State, Secretary Blinken, and I'm pleased to see that the European Parliament has condemned this blockade. But condemning the blockade is not enough if there are no consequences. Uh, when we speak of the residents of Artsakh, we see people who have to ration their food items, who are skipping dosages of medicine, and as I mentioned, are doing so in the middle of winter without heat. Now, the Aliyev regime has decided to try to disguise this blockade as a civilian demonstration. Let's be clear. The Aliyev regime is a dictatorship. Freedom House gave Azerbaijan a 9 out of 100 rating when it came to political rights and civil liberties. And a 1% democracy percentage. This is not a country where civilians just decide to have a demonstration. It is certainly not a country where civilians just have a demonstration that blockades a road for 50 days. That doesn't happen unless it is sponsored by the regime. This is not an environmental protest. This is an illegal international blockade. So it is time. Now, Aliyev, I think, has made very clear what his intentions are. When he said, whoever does not want to become our citizen can leave. Well, what is he saying? The residents of Artsakh, 120,000 strong, are citizens of the Republic of Artsakh. They have lived there for millennia. And he is saying they're not his citizens and they should leave. He is announcing his intention of this blockade, which is to make Artsakh unlivable and to use a blockade as a method of ethnic cleansing. The tactic is blockade. The effect is civilian deprivation. The purpose is ethnic cleansing. The United States must act. Uh, along with uh, several others, uh, including the uh, co-chairs of the Armenian Caucus, we are introducing a resolution condemning this deadly blockade. I also must urge the administration to impose real consequences on Aliyev for plunging the people of Artsakh into this humanitarian disaster. The administration must enforce Section 907 and stop all military assistance to Azerbaijan. Uh, actions are needed. The words are good, but it is now time to act. I'm proud to stand with the Armenian American community here on Capitol Hill and my colleagues from the House and from the Senate and say we condemn this attempt at ethnic cleansing. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Congressman David Valadeo of California's 22nd Congressional District and co-chair of the House Armenian Caucus. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Valadeo. I represent California's 21st Congressional, 22nd Congressional District. Uh, thank you for having me. As co-chair of the Armenian Caucus, I, I'm glad to join all here today uh, to support the Safe Karbaugh uh, Coalition.
Azerbaijan, the situation is growing more dire every single day. Azerbaijan is once again weaponizing critical infrastructure and manufacturing a humanitarian crisis for Ar Ar Armenians living in Nagorno-Karabakh. The U.S. must use every single diplomatic tool at our disposal to end this blockade and ensure the safety and well-being of Armenians living in Ar Artsakh. I'll continue to work with my colleagues in Congress to raise awareness about this very important issue and work to hold Azerbaijan accountable. Thank you for all your efforts um, and for your hard work. It's, and your work is so important in ensuring the safety and security of thousands of, of Armenians subjected to the Alevi uh, regime. We must continue to stand strong. And as one of the few members of Congress, and I think I was actually the first one uh, to step foot in Nagorno-Karabakh after uh, the Civil War, I mean, it really was an experience to see for myself what it was like there on the ground. And the devastation that's happening now is just wrong. And uh, we've got to continue to be a strong voice here in the United States for people across the globe. But this situation is one that we have to continue to raise to the top because it's, it's a devastating situation for so many. Uh, so I appreciate everyone taking the time to bring this attention. I appreciate my colleagues and all their hard work. Uh, but we've got to continue to work hard on this. So again, thank you very much. Next, we'd like to welcome Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis of New York's 11th Congressional District. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is uh, an honor to stand here with my colleagues and this amazing coalition of dedicated organizations that uh, want to see the suffering of the Armenian people to end. As a Greek American, uh, our history, uh, Greece and, and uh, the Armenian community, go back very, very far. And obviously, we were both suffered greatly uh, at the hands uh, of the Ottoman Empire, human rights, genocide. Uh, we've experienced a lot together. And so, you know, that is why I'm here today to continue to stand with the Armenian community to see that centuries later, they're still suffering uh, human rights violations, uh, this time at the hands of Azerbaijan. Uh, I join my colleagues in calling uh, for the administration to further its support. Uh, I hope that the representative to the United Nations will also uh, make sure that this is a forefront issue that is uh, being discussed. And we stand together as a bipartisan group, members of Congress, to lend our support. But uh, certainly to see the ethnic Armenians of Artsakh suffering uh, with their supply of life, life-saving supplies that everyone in our world relies on and needs to live. All right, food, medicine, energy. To see these supplies weaponized against them is truly heartbreaking. And so thank you for bringing attention to this story. I believe this coalition only needs to grow and that we need to continue to talk about this issue until this crisis is resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Congressman Jim Costa from California's 21st Congressional District. Thank you very much. And it's indeed my uh, honor to be a part of this bipartisan coalition and to thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle who are members of the Armenian Caucus because the issue that really is at heart today is the unjust uh, attack, the continuation by Azerbaijan on Armenian, uh, Armenia and the Armenian people. Let's be clear, this is all about ethnic and religious cleansing on views of the world that go back centuries. Uh, the 40 days that uh, this blockade has existed since December 12th by the Azerbaijan government, and my, my uh, good friend Brad Sherman was very clear about this, this is directly uh, uh, the efforts of the Azerbaijan government, um, is uh, directed as an attack on Nagorno-Koronov, or as uh, my good friend uh, David Valadero talked about, uh, in his visit to Artsakh, a very important area adjacent to the country of Armenia in which over 120,000 Armenians, uh, ethnic Armenians, live. It's their home. And clearly, uh, this is a continuation of the uh, previous attacks that Azerbaijan has made uh, upon the country of Armenia. 
to um, rid them uh, of their home. Uh, this blockade is uh, attempting to prevent uh, the provide provisions of medicine, food, uh, and clothing, and, and other supplies that are dwindling. Uh, the authorities in Artsakh uh, are taking on rationing of supplies, critical supplies to sustain themselves of oil, rice, sugar, just to name a few of the, uh, ne the basic necessities of life to live. In addition, Azerbaijan has cut out natural gas, telecommunications, and electricity in the region, leaving large parts of the population during this time of the year when winter has set in, in freezing temperatures uh, and in the dark. This is a horrific impact uh, on this continued ethnic cleansing on behalf of Azerbaijan. Failure to resolve this current dispute will only result in more suffering and isolation and will provoke new unrest. And therefore, um, uh, we call upon the administration uh, and as with our coalition partners in Europe to put all the diplomatic pressures um, on Azerbaijan to comply with the Minsk Accord. Now, of course, one of the guarantors of the Minsk Accord was Russia. And we clearly know that Russia, given their attack on Ukraine and the war criminals that uh, the Russian government, beginning with Putin, uh, are, are not going to uh, enforce with the 22,000 plus Russian soldiers at the border the Minsk Accord. That just isn't going to happen. I don't have faith in the Russian government, that's for sure. I'm very proud to co-sponsor this resolution with my colleagues back here that really speaks to the Azerbaijan blockade of the Armenians in Artsakh, uh, we must hold the Azerbaijanis accountable. Um, and so therefore, all of us who represent part of the Armenian diaspora, uh, Congressman David Valadeo and I proudly represent so many of the Armenian community in the San Joaquin Valley, understand and know firsthand of the pain and suffering that they have witnessed over generations and which their relatives today are experiencing in, in Nagorno-Korba. So launch the Save Karbakh Coalition is critical to helping prevent the atrocities against the Armenians today and tomorrow. We must stand together to raise the voices necessary to put down this, this uh, atrocity on behalf of the government of Azerbaijan. Uh, it's important that we let the Armenian communities know throughout the world and in the San Joaquin Valley, we stand with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we'd like to welcome Congressman Lou Correa from the 26th District in California. Thank you, Barry. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for being here today. I'm Congressman Lou Correa, Orange County, California. So I was walking over here, I was reminded of being a kid in the hood way back when, growing up in Orange County. One of my best buddies, gentleman, last name, Garabedian, to play after school together, played sports together, and Art soon enough let me know that he was Armenian. I said, where is that? Where are you from? I learned more and more about the history of the Armenian people. I learned of the genocide, the centuries of struggle for independence, for human rights, religious freedom. Later on in my career in the state legislature, a lot of us here voted to support resolutions remembering Armenian history, the genocide. And today, of course, we'll all be supporting another resolution supporting the Armenian people. Our job to make sure that we bring justice to the Armenian people. Your job is to make sure that we don't forget, to make sure that we're reminded that the struggle continues. And as we move forward, I know we will reach a place. I know we'll continue to work hard to reach a place where the Armenian people can enjoy freedom, human rights, and religious freedom. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Next, we'd like to welcome from the 12th Congressional District of California, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, ranking member of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on State and Foreign Operations. Thank you very much and good morning. First of all, uh, I was uh, proud years ago to join my colleagues in declaring uh, the atrocities against the Armenian people uh, genocide. I remember I was on the Foreign Affairs Committee and, and learned quite a bit just during that debate about why it had to be declared and why this country needed to acknowledge uh, the genocide that took place against the Armenian people. And as the um, former chair and now the ranking member of the Appropriations Subcommittee on State and Foreign Operations, and also a member of the Congressional Armenian Caucus, I have long been a strong advocate for humanitarian support and recovery needs arising from, of course, the Artsakh uh, conflict. As we all know, Artsakh is enduring a um, major and growing humanitarian crisis caused by Azerbaijan's illegal, mind you, illegal blockade of the Rachin Corridor, Artsakh's only humanitarian lifeline to Armenia. And so, yes, like all of you, I strongly condemn Azerbaijan's blockage of the vital corridor connecting Armenia and Artsakh and call for the immediate opening. With extreme fuel and food and medical shortages, uh, this is now a dire humanitarian crisis. And so I'm pleased and uh, I thank you all very much um, because it, this wouldn't have happened without the community here and the leadership and, and people who really helped us put the language into the fiscal uh, 23 omnibus funding bill to ensure that we have a comprehensive strategy to address the humanitarian needs of the Armenian people and I look forward to continuing uh, to work with the administration to get this done. We were able to secure 60 million dollars for Armenia to support economic development, energy independence and democracy and a requirement that the Appropriations Committee is consulted by the Secretary of State prior to delivering security assistance for Armenia and Azerbaijan. We have a long way to go, but I can assure you that you have an advocate with many of us, uh, not only members here, but many in Congress who are standing with you fighting for the humanitarian needs of the Armenian people. I had the privilege to visit Armenia and really had a, got to know the Armenian people in the country and recognize the strength and the love and the support for democracy and uh, all of the issues as it relates to uh, what is taking place now in um, Armenia, between Armenia and Azerbaijan. So I just want to um, thank you all very much for your leadership and for uh, helping us here in the House move this forward. Thank you again and good to be with you. Next, I'd like to welcome Ambassador Sam Brownback, former U.S. Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom and Chairman of the National Committee for Religious Freedom. Thank you, Justin. Uh, thank you all for being here, and what a wonderful coalition. Years ago, as a young senator, uh, I carried a bill called the Silk Road Strategy Act that contained within it the authority for the administration to waive the 907 sanctions. And I did that as a part of an effort to build relationships between the United States and Central Asia uh, and build relationships with Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is allowing and conducting this strangulation move of these people uh, that's taking place that we're talking about today. I'm calling on the administration, the Biden administration, to not waive those 907 sanctions unless this blockade is lifted immediately. Those sanctions need to go back into place. They, they need to be effective against Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan could cause this blockade to stop today. They are not. They are allowing it to continue. And those sanctions need to go back on Azerbaijan if this blockade is not lifted. That needs to take place, and I call on the administration to do that today. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Mr. Aram Hamparian of the Armenian National Committee of America. So very much has been said that is needed to be said, so I'm not going to repeat what legislators have so eloquently shared today, but I, I will offer words of thanks 
to those in our community, our coalition partners, our congressional allies, our brothers and sisters in faith and freedom. What's happening in Aljaf today, it feels far away. It is far away. But there are things that can be done in this city today that will help alleviate the suffering of the people of Aljaf, that will hold accountable those who are culpable for that suffering. Two steps. Number one, number one, stop sending our tax dollars to Azerbaijan. We cannot, at the same time, have our State Department condemn an act of utter brutality by Azerbaijan, and in that very same day, ship our tax dollars in the form of military aid to that regime. That's number one. Number two, provide humanitarian assistance to Artsakh. We have found ways, I'm proud as an American that we have found ways to help people all over the world, in war zones, in very difficult circumstances. We can meet the test of providing aid to Artsakh and USAID, our State Department, the full resources of our government should get to work on that right away. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to welcome the Honorable Robert Avatsian, Permanent Representative of the Republic of Artsakh. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Ambassador, uh, dear friends, compatriots. It's a pleasure to see you all, but unfortunately, it is a crisis that brought us together here. Uh, we've heard many times that it's been already 47 days that the lives of uh, every Artsakh, 120,000 people, including 30,000 kids, 20,000 elderly and 9,000 people with rare disabilities have been severely worsening. Patients, many of them in, in critical condition, continue to suffer in hospitals from the lack of medicines and the ability to get the proper treatment outside the Republic. And grocery stores, markets are almost full. They're running low on even the most basic products. And only a fraction of it has been supplied by the ICRC, the Red Cross, and the uh, peacekeepers. And to further aggravate the situation, the adversary is playing with the gas supply, has cut the electricity main pipeline for, uh, main line from Armenia, and also disrupt the communication. What is very peculiar here that this is not a crisis caused by humanitarian by environmental disaster, by uh, global pandemic or, so, or economic downturn. This is a crisis caused by a political disaster, and it is a political disaster. When a Saddam Hussein type autocrat decides who is to live and who should starve, when he decides who should have uh, proper treatment and who should die in the hospital, And for us in Artsakh, it's clear that the intentions of the autocrats in Baku are genocidal against our people. They want to leave us with two choices, either to leave our homes or to stay and die from starvation, cold or, hung or uh, diseases. Despite all that, besieged but unbroken, Artsakh continues its struggle. Our kids don't have baby formula, our patients lack medicines, but the people and the state continue the fight to protect our right to live as a free and sovereign democracy. We are not alone in this fight, and we should not be. It is with gratitude that we have seen our competitors from around the world to join this fight by supporting Artsakh, by informing the elected representatives and appointed representatives of the executive branch about the reality on the ground. It is with gratitude that we have received the statements from the Capitol Hill, from our supporters here, from so many organizations and individuals who have joined this struggle, because this is really a global struggle. This is not the issue of 120,000 Armenians. This is an issue of 120,000 people. This is a civilizational issue, and everyone has its say in this. And we very much welcome the fact that the resolution will be introduced next week 
we hope that it will become one of the next solid steps by the U.S. legislature to break this blockade and to bring normal life to Artsakhtis. I want to convey my gratitude to every one of you here for forming this coalition and uh, this is indeed a very important manifestation for us that the international community, the international community of nations and organizations which care about our rights, about our rights to education, about our, our rights to religion, our rights to live, our rights to be one of members of the safer and more prosperous world, we want to thank you for that. And I'm, I hope that together we will join our hands and by the success of this coalition in breaking, in breaking the blockade of Artsakh, we will also send the proper signal to atrocities around the world who think that the law of the jungle can work, that oppression and aggression and hatred can prevail over justice and democracy. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jason Jones, President of the Vulnerable People's Project. Jason. It's a privilege to stand here today with Ambassador Sam Brownback, the Coalition of Members of Congress. Our organization, the Vulnerable People Project, stands with communities facing ethnic cleansing and genocide. In the past month, we've delivered over half a million meals to minority communities across Afghanistan. We've, st we've stood with the Uyghur for a decade. But the ethnic cleansing in Artsakh stands apart. It's unique. Mark Twain said that history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. The ethnic cleansing in Artsakh rhymes with the great catastrophe of just a little over a century ago. A catastrophe that led to a century that was catastrophic, a century of genocides, and a century of total war. If we do not hold the line, break this blockade, and free the people of Artsakh, there will be no line to hold. Today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Hitler was famous in his quote, leading up to his quote, final solution, which was, the world doesn't remember the Armenians. We do remember the Armenians. We used to say, on this day, never again, but we're too embarrassed to say that today. The question we need to ask ourselves is, what did we know, and what did we know it, about the ethnic cleansing in Artsakh, and what did we do? Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Joel Feldkamp from the Christian Solidarity International. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you to the fellow members of the coalition and to the members of Congress who are here. I want to echo the words of Congressman Sherman. A condemning the blockade is good, but words are not enough. This is the time for action. This administration is the first administration in the history of the U.S. to recognize the historical fact of the Armenian Genocide of 1915. It cannot allow a second round of the Armenian Genocide to happen on its watch. I'd like to read a message from a resident of Nagorno-Karabakh named Marietta, a 48-year-old nurse who works at the Lady Cox Rehabilitation Center in Stepanakert. Stepanakert, excuse me. She says, My twin children are five years old, a boy and a girl. My daughter has low limb weakness and hemoglobin problems. During this blockade, it has become indescribably difficult for me to live and take care of my children. Due to the risk on foot, all of that becomes doubly difficult when your child has problems with walking. Every day, my children cry as we cross the icy roads on the long journey. And when your child asks you for fruits and vegetables and you know that you cannot give them to her, then life in all its shades loses its meaning. The Save Karabakh Coalition includes organizations and individuals of diverse faith backgrounds, and we welcome cooperation and support from all people of goodwill. But as a representative of Christian Solidarity International, I want to make a special appeal to Christian organizations and churches in this country. Our brothers and sisters in Christ are under attack, an attack that they have been warning us is coming for years now. Where are you? Where is your organization on this issue? Where is your church? Where is your bishop? Where is your pastor? We live in an age 
when American Christians have brought their political engagement to unprecedented heights. But on this issue, we are way, way behind. It's time to catch up. It's time to speak out. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to welcome Dr. Greg Stanton from Genocide Watch to say a few remarks. Good to be with you. Thank you. Let us make no mistake about it. The blockade of Artsakh is an act of genocide. Article 2C of the Genocide Convention enumerates the difficult reasons why this is a genocide, an act of genocide. Because it says that among the acts of genocide is the intentional infliction of conditions of life that are deliberately intended to destroy a group. And that is what is happening in Artsakh. With this blockade, Azerbaijan is trying to prevent food, medicine, all kinds of other supplies reaching the people of Nagorno-Karabakh or also the Republic of Artsakh. Genocide Watch especially wants to underline the fact that on Holocaust Memorial Day we must not let another act of genocide go unpunished. We must have the United States insist that Azerbaijan must end this blockade or it will cut off all assistance of military or other kinds to our Azerbaijan and we will impose a blockade on all Azerbaijani oil and gas. We thank you for this solidarity and for forming this coalition. Next I'd like to welcome Mr. Dean Salakos from the Helena Cleaners. Leaders. Good morning, everyone. I'm with the Hellenic American Leadership Council, and I would just like to uh, first let anyone know what an honor it is to be here and to be part of this coalition. Helene stand next to the Armenian brothers and sisters, because after all, we are Armenians by experience. Like the Armenians, we suffered during the Christian genocide perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire and Turkey. And for 100 years, we've been waiting for the world to be serious about its pledge of never again. This latest attempt at genocide in Artsakh is proof that the world has not yet gone serious about its pledge. So today, on Holocaust Remembrance Day, it is time to get serious about the pledge of never again and end the Artsakh blockade. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to welcome Ms. Faith McDonald of Caritasmos Global. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be with this group, to be part of this coalition. I'm the Director of Advo Advocacy at Catartismos Global, which is a human rights and advocacy organization in the Anglican Church in North America. And we stand with our friends here and with the Armenian people of Artsakh facing this egregious human humanitarian crisis. Many years ago, just before the end of the Soviet Union, I went to Yerevan on a church mission trip. And the people who, who had us there took us to the uh, genocide memorial, which was a beautiful but heartbreaking sight to see and really impacted upon me the truth of the genocide that took place in 1915. Later they took us to visit some Christian families that had fled from Nagorno-Karabakh to Yerevan. They had been treated brutally and they were still going through terrible trauma. So the 90s were genocide revisited. Um, it, it's just, uh, I have become aware that, as, as others have said, that genocides don't just happen once. If we allow them to happen, they happen more than once. They are revisited. And now, in the terms of the UN Genocide Convention, the, the conditions are present for genocide again in Artsakh. Will we, the United States and the world community, really allow the Armenian people to go through genocide again? Katartismos, my, my organization, the word is a Greek word that means to equip. 
but it also is a medical term that means to bring into alignment as in the person's skeletal alignment in their body we're out of alignment if we look away and pretend not to see when a people are facing genocide for the third time we call on the US government and the world community but particularly as my brother Joel has said the Christian community the churches to not look away the Bible says if you look away when slaughter is happening does not the one who knows the heart know what you're doing and we say to the churches especially it's time to speak out for the people of Artsakh who are facing genocide thank you We invite you and welcome to join to the Safe Karabakh Coalition. You can find more information at safekarabakh.org. Also, we invite you to join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. at the Azerbaijani Embassy, where we will be staging a civil action and protest to protest the aggression of the Azerbaijani government against the people of Nagorno-Karabakh. Thank you so much for being here today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.